school. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? It's absolutely glorious out there, isn't it, at the moment? It's been beautiful for the whole weekend. Um, I hope you've been out enjoying your lovely sunshine weather. Um, I've been away for a few days, which has been absolutely glorious. Um, swimming in the sea and uh, cooking on fire and uh, carving wax and all manner of amazing things actually which is really really cool um, so I wanted to have a quick chat with you today about summer dresses because it is summer dress weather isn't it and it's absolutely glorious it really is um, if you are watching us don't forget to say hello today um, it's really lovely to find out where people are so just drop in the comments where you are today and that's really good too. It's quite nice to see how how far spread everybody is actually which is really nice. Um, uh, as I was saying we're talking about summer dresses today which is brilliant because it is exactly the kind of weather now is the time when you want to start thinking about wearing things that are a little bit cooler, a little bit breezier and easier kind of thing which is rather nice. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today about Cordelia. Now this is a really gorgeous, easy to wear, easy to make summer dress and it's in jersey which is gorgeous because it's such an easy fabric to work with. People get really scared about um, working with knit fabrics but actually they are super easy to deal with, they really are. The ones that we've got here are from um, Art Gallery and they are such an amazing quality, they really are. They all contain 5% elastane which means that they have really good kind of um, spring backable kind of qualities so they will although you've got the stretch they do kind of ping back which is rather nice so you can see they are quite stretchy but the fabrics are still quite um, substantial enough they're not going to be they're not going to really misbehave or anything like that and I love this so Cordelia this is our Cordelia dress so it's comes in lots of different versions, well three actually, um, and you can decide which one you're going to do. It has three different sleeve options. So we've got a sleeveless one, which is great if you're kind of, you know, just on the beach or winter event, it's really gorgeous weather outside, which is lovely. We've got a short sleeved version, which has this lovely little kind of flippy um, butterfly kind of sleeve. And we also have a straighter one, which is a little bit more kind of autumnal, and that's a three-quarter length straight sleeve, which is really lovely. But this is great, actually. Now, don't worry, it doesn't come this low when you're actually wearing it. Um, it has, it will kind of sit slightly higher. And the nice thing is, you can adjust how much décolleté you uh, reveal because of the twist, which is brilliant, actually. And it is a full twist. So... We take half of it and you cross it over once and then you cross it over again. But don't worry because we have a whole full in-depth course about this dress in the sewing studio. So if you are a silk member, you can um, watch all of the videos and it takes you through everything step by step, which is brilliant. Um, if you're not sure about working with knit fabrics, we've also got a course in there which is all about working with knits. And we have a course uh, that's all about working with an overlocker as well. Although you don't need an overlocker when you're working with knit fabrics. Um, you can just use a normal sewing machine, which is brilliant, actually. The only things you need to remember when working with knit fabrics is to make sure that you have a needle that's correct for your fabric. So you want to make sure you're using a ballpoint or a jersey needle because they're just a little bit rounded and they will kind of push their way between the yarn of the fabric rather than trying to split it and that's where you get ladders and rungs and holes and stuff um, and also another really good thing with sewing with knits is if you've got a walking foot so if you're a quilter you've probably got one anyway but what you want or sometimes actually you may even have a top set of dog teeth um, already on your sewing machine I think faff sewing machines have those and um, if anyone's got one or can remind, let me know which uh, brand of machine has that. I think it's a faff. Um, but what you want really, and that what a walking foot does, is has that top set of dog teeth. So it's grabbing the fabric from both top and bottom 
as it's kind of pulling it under the needles. So it means you're not going to get so much stretching in your fabric as you stitch it. And the third thing is to remember to use a stretch stitch because you don't want a normal straight stitch and then um, as soon as the fabric or that seam gets any kind of pressure put on it, the stitches are going to pop. So you want to make sure that you're using a little kind of zigzag stitch or um, a specific stretch stitch. Quite often they look like a little bolt of lightning or a zigzag that's been pushed over. So those are quite nice. But these are the fabrics that I want to show you. Now, Sharon was joking with me this morning that I can't remember the names of the fabrics. And Olivia actually knew more of them than I did. So that's part of the course, really. I need to do some homework, clearly, on what the fabrics are. Um, this one, I'm going to read it quickly before Sharon <laughs> can get there. This is, what's it called, what's it called? Um, Paisley's Forever Rosa. There we are. Now this, I think, is a really pretty one, actually. It's so lovely. Um, and this would make up beautifully in uh, Cordelia. Um, I'm just going to that and just make sure. Oops. Oh, where have I gone? I've lost myself now. Let's have a quick look and see where we are. That's it. Ah, oh, lovely. Comments, there we go. That's right, I couldn't see any of the comments, so forgive me if I haven't said hello to you, but there's no doubt. I was thinking, oh my God, I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> there's no comments coming up in the, in the comment section. But good morning to everybody. Hello, Linda, how are you? Um, morning, Deborah. Sound is low. Okay. Do you want me to shout? Maybe I'm not being a bit, maybe I'm not projecting <laughs> enough yes. this morning. Um, morning, Catherine. Johnny, for the first time. Oh, you're sewing Angelica at the moment. It is a really gorgeous pattern, isn't it? I love Angelica. In fact, we've got two of them here. Um, On Instagram, we've got Delta Foxtrot from New Zealand. Oh, lovely. Hello. And we've got someone else from Hereford. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I like Hereford, actually. It's really beautiful over there. Um, that's cool. Oh, Linda says you downloaded the peas. And your 10 centimetre square is 11 and a half centimetres. What am I doing wrong? Linda, double check that when you are downloading and printing out the first page, that you're printing out at 100% and you're not scaling the um, PDF. And that way, just print out the first page that's got the test square on it. Make sure it's 100% and you should be okay. That's cool. Oh, Catherine, you're just outside Malvern. Oh, I bet that's beautiful over there this morning, isn't it? Anna says, morning all. Looking forward to seeing your fabrics for summer dresses. Love a breeze of a skirt. I know what you mean. Sometimes you'd want just a little bit of aeration going on, don't you? Um, all Barbara says, hello, Manchester here. Loving my top. Oh, well, thank you. This, I know, this, this is in the book. So you'll be able to do it later. It's coming out on the 13th of July. So we'll be doing a big, big thing about that later. Ooh, um, Jackie said it's cloudy and whirling. Cloudy and Worthing, oh, down by the sea, you see, that's the thing. Mind you, the beach at any time of year, I think is absolutely gorgeous. I really do. Um, oh, greetings from Martine and Sydney. A couple of people from down under today. Thank you for joining us. Morning, Amy, how are you? Um, we'll be chatting later, won't we? That'd be good. Morning, Alison. Uh, brilliant, Sean's popping up the link, so that's great. So we've got the Cordelia dress pattern up there already, and we've got the um, Paisley Forever in Rosa. Now I think this is gorgeous actually, it's a really pretty one. But, um, and it goes really nicely. I mean, you know, if you didn't want to use it for Cordelia, you could use it for other things obviously. And it goes brilliantly with our plain fuchsia um, jersey as well. Let's just pop those out of the way. So if you're not kind of into big florals or anything like that, you can always work, it works really nicely with the plain actually. In fact, I really like it in this um, stripe. Unfortunately, we don't have this in stock at the moment, but we can get it. So if anybody wants it, let me know and we'll pop an order in. But I think that works really prettily, actually. I can just imagine myself on a beach in Cornwall in that, actually, which would be perfect. With an ice cream. With an ice cream, yeah. Making sure the seagulls don't get it first. <laughs> Charlie got mugged last year on the beach. Um, it took it quite, it took it <laughs> quite by surprise, actually. Which I know was not, I did laugh. No, I'm not supposed to, but I did. <laughs> um, this is another gorgeous one, actually. And I love the kind of little pop of pink that's coming through here. Um, this one is called Writer's Garden. And it's Writer's Garden Stem. Oh, 
oh no, it's next door, it's Rianne next door. We've got an amazing pot stuff next door to our studio, it's the most beautiful things. It's called Rianne Maiden, so do check her out. She's on Instagram, she's got about 10 million followers, but she does the most amazing pots. Um, this, I think, again, would make up really beautifully in Cordelia. Um, I love this. Again, it's got lots and lots of different colours in there that you could pick out too, which is lovely. Um, as I mentioned before, they've all got 5% elastane in them, so they have a really good kind of return. Um, so they're not going to bag or anything like that. So if you wanted to make leggings out of these, that would work as well, which is really cool. Um, this is lovely. Now, I did show this last week, but it was more to do with the backwing top. However, I think the Cordelia in these prints just looks stunning. It really does. Um, and I'm just wondering whether... Oh, my, my laptop keeps freezing. It's not showing me any more comments. Let me just do a refresh. Oops, where have I gone? That's it. It's nothing more interesting than watching somebody go, ooh, ah, mm. <laughs> is there on Facebook, which is not ideal. Uh, oh, does it want to let me back in? No, it's not going to let me back in. Oh, okay. it's not happy today, is it? Facebook's not happy with me today, no. Oh, there we are. That's better. That's better, I can see things now. That's cool. Lovely. Morning, Linda. I know it's really sunny. Morning, yeah. Dana. Hello, Lynn. A bit late, sorry, but very sunny in Cardiff. Oh, I was driving your way on Sunday, I was, and it was glorious then too. Um, oh, Amanda says she's watching with one eye as she's supposed to be working. I think a lot of people are in that position, aren't they, really? A lot of people are still working from home. Um, uh, oh, Amy, you're making the Angelica Toir. Brilliant. Uh, morning, Claire. Oh, lots of people are doing Angelicas, which is brilliant. I know, she's just about right for this time of year, isn't she, really? You want something nice and kind of wafty, like you're kind of, you know, all the poppies are just coming out in the cornfields, aren't they? So you're like wafting through a cornfield wearing your Angelica. Uh, Fruteria Blue in cotton. In, uh, this is the one, isn't it? This is the one. Fruteria. Now, where is it? Sharon popped it up there for me already. I'm trying to find the name of it. Fruiteria Blur, it's called. Which I think is quite nice. Not Blur, but Blur, as in French Blue. Which I think is beautiful. I do quite like the larger patterns. Are you more of a larger pattern person, or do you prefer the little more ditzy kinds of things, actually? Which of these are quite sweet, too. Um, but I think that would work really nicely in a Cordelia. Um, and I do like this one, too. Now, again, I think this is... I think this is probably my absolute favourite, this one. And I think I might have to, um, it might, yeah, I think Sharon would want to go for this too. Um, but I think that's beautiful. I love the colours in this. They're just bright and clean, aren't they? Um, they're really lovely. So, oops. Oh, Maria, hello, how are you? Um, oh, you're baking in Peacehaven. Nice. Come for some retail therapy after spending your 65th birthday in bed. Well, why not? When you reach that whatever age, you can do whatever you like, can't you? Um, so this one is... Now, I bet Charles popped the link up already, didn't she? Um, it is... Bouquet News. That's it. Bouquet News. I will remember them <laughs> when we go head to head. <laughs> oh DC Kane said uh, she loves larger patterns. Yes, I quite I prefer larger ones too. In fact, we were talking about this as part of the diploma session that we had last week, which is very interesting. And the videos will be going up very soon, actually, about all of that, which is good. Um, or oh, Linda, I'll be on a beach in Cornwall in a couple of weeks. Can't wait. Not that I'm jealous or anything like that, but I think I'm hoping you'll have a lovely time and the weather is kind to you. Um, let's pop that in there. The confetti fields are opening soon. 
you heard of those? Oh, where's that? It's in Pershaw. Oh, yes. the way. All the blossoms and everything. Yeah, really pretty flowers. Oh, nice yeah. to go in your Angelica, have some photographs of the pretty flowers. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do that, exactly. Um, has anyone been? Anyone been to the confetti fields in Pershaw? What's it like? I know they've got lavender fields over there and bluebells as well, haven't they? Over that way, which is rather lovely. Um, Cool. So this one is called, I know this one, I know this one, it's called Tiny Dancer. I don't even need to look. <laughs> so I'm just checking now, just checking I am right. Yes it is, Tiny Dancer, Midnight, perfect. Um, I just think of Elton John when I see this one. But I love this. Again, it's a little bit more subdued. I kind of think it has a bit of a sea salt kind of vibe to it though. It isn't a sea salt, it's an art gallery fabric, but it's still really lovely actually. Um, I think it's a beautiful one. Um, I quite fancy it in a nice kind of, actually it would look quite nice with my with my white burkies actually, which would go quite well. Um, but again, so this is Tiny Dancer. Again, it's a, an art gallery, 5% elastane cotton single jersey, which is rather lovely. Um, and it just, make, they all make up beautifully and they wash well as well, which is really nice too. Um, so let's pop that one back over there. And I have to say, I really like, I know, I know I say I like them all. I do like them all, otherwise I wouldn't buy them. But actually, I would wear this. All the glorious just wear But the door's open today because it's nice and airy. It means that we do hear traffic when it comes past, which is not very often. Um, but I love this. This, I think, is my colour. And I think I do actually need some of this in my life. I think I'd quite fancy a, a Cordelia dress. With this. Um, now, again, the show I'm going to put it up before I can remember it. It's called Dew and Moss. Is that what it's called? No, it's not. It's called Daisy Button Buds. There we are. Traffic is quite cool. Um, I've not seen any comments coming up. Oh, good no. morning. Thank you. Just need your surname? Fallon. Fallon. Yes, thank F you. Lovely. Thanks a lot. More fabrics just arrived. Look at that. Lovely. Well, yeah, look at it at the box later and it'll be ready for next week. So that's good. Let me see if I can get for some reason all the comments. That's better. They're popped up now. They have. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm just making sure. Don't want to miss anything. There's a question from Maria. Can you see that one at the yes. bottom? Yes. Yes. Any suggestions? Major Angelica Toile, but too wide at the neck. I put in two pleats, nothing else I can do. Um, what do you mean by wide? Is it just literally width ways? What you can do sometimes is to insert... Oh, here we go. He's reversing. <laughs> we'll wait until he goes. <laughs> or until he goes forwards, anyway. <laughs> That's fine. So, on the Angelica, I just happened to have one here. On the shoulders, are you thinking it's too wide here? You could just do a little insert underneath, almost like a little filler. So on the shoulder here, where you've got that, that kind of point, pointed edge, you could, oops, there, around your neckline, you could just do a little filler, almost like a kind of, um, you know, like they have on a fisherman's sweater, that kind of thing, or uh, a proper boat neck sweater. So you just, where you've got that, it's just a bit too wide, you can just pop a bit of fabric underneath there and just top stitch it in place. And I think that would work just as well. It would kind of give you an extra feature, which would be quite sweet, actually. So it would just bring that neckline just in by maybe an inch or so. And that way, hopefully, it should stop, you know, if you're feeling it's too wide. The other thing to do though is to alter your pattern so that next time you know it's going to be right. And that, all you want to do then is, um, I think we did it on one of the Technique Tuesdays. There's a YouTube video for how to bring in a neckline or to reduce the width of a neckline if you've got slightly narrower shoulders. Um, so it might be worth having a little look at that as well. And that's on YouTube, so you should just be able to have a, have a look through. Um, if if we can find it, we'll stick a link in it for in the in the comments for you. Um, 
but that should help. So I hope that's I hope that's helped. That's a couple of my suggestions there for you. Um, there we go. Let's pop that one back in there. So this one is tiny. No, it's not. It's called Daisy Button Buds. That's the one. Daisy Button Buds. Um, there we go. Yeah, brilliant. Sharon's got that one there. That's cool. Yes, fabrics. <laughs> Too wide. Ah, oh, okay. Love that idea. Yeah, it's another option that you can do, actually. If you don't want that big, wide neckline, don't forget you can alter the patterns. So you could, if you didn't want to have that overlap on the, on the shoulder, you could just, where the dotted lines are on the pattern, just join the shoulders at that point and then recurve the neckline. Again, there's a YouTube video on how to adjust the neckline. So if you want to make it slightly smaller, that's all you have to do. But your pattern pieces up together um, and just redraw that neckline. Just make sure you've got a bit of paper stuck on each side um, and just redraw that neckline shape. It's not a difficult job to do. So if you want to have a go at doing it, feel free. Um, and it should be, it should work absolutely fine for you. So Deborah, give it a go. Um, or you can try the little kind of inset piece actually, which would work quite nicely as well. So lovely on Instagram has asked how much Tiny Dancer and Daisy Button Buds is per metre. Um, I think there's a link in the comments that will take you straight to the website so you should be able to see there how much it is because off the top of my head I can't tell you. Um, unless Sharon wants to pop it in the comments. Um, you might not be able to see the link on Instagram but if you click uh, across to the website. Oh yeah, hop over to the website. It's in the jersey and knit fabric section and you'll be able to find it in there. Um, yeah, I know I should actually remember that, shouldn't I? That's an, a, a bit of an epic fail on my part there. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, for some reason, my all the comments aren't refreshing automatically. So I'm just having to have a quick see what's occurring. Oh, morning, Sue. <laughs> you felt the need to hose off after gardening this morning. I don't blame you. It's a bit warm out there in the sun, isn't it? Which is rather lovely and we don't want to complain. Jackie So said she's made a top with Tiny, tiny Dancer and it's a lovely fabric. Oh, it is nice, isn't it? In actual fact, I think we had somebody on... Um, we ran a workshop for the clerical t-shirt. Um, who knew there was even a thing? But well, actually there is, and, um, and I think one of the ladies, who was um, a lady vicar, made it up. Um, and it looked fantastic actually, it was just a really nice little t-shirt that she could wear with her dog collar. Which is great actually. Um, but I think that's brilliant. It does make up beautifully actually, it's a really nice fabric. Yeah. There we are. Oh, Liz just cut out another Imogen, your fourth. In a lovely crisp red patterned Rose and Hubble fabric. Oh, lovely. Gosh, I remember Rose and Hubble from, um, God, yonks ago. I used to work in a shop called CNH Fabrics in Tunbridge Wells. That was my first Saturday job. And I remember they had Rose and Hubble fabrics. So that must have been, how old am I? That must have been um, nearly 40 years ago. Oh my God. That's really. Did you know, actually, something, just random thing popped up on my Facebook. Raiders of the Lost Ark is 40 years old. Can you believe that? That's outrageous. 40 years old for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Random fact of the day. <laughs> that is totally <laughs> random fact of the day, actually. Yes. Um, I keep missing all your comments. I'm really sorry if I miss you. Because it's just not automatically refreshing. There we are. Have you done anything using a cover stitch machine? I got mine out yesterday and looked at it. Lynn, Linda, they are amazing. We are planning on a course for the cover stitch machine because there's actually lots of different things you can do with it. And what we're doing is just making sure that we're covering all bases, really. Um, they are a little bit of a one-trick pony in that all they do is top stitching, kind of. But unless you get the other attachments, so you can do loads of different things with them, but you kind of need different attachments. So you've got... Um, you can do binding with them, they do elastic feeders, all kinds of different things. Um, 
but what we're going to do is we're going to write a course and we'll film it, a bit like the Love Your Overlocker one, but it's with a, um, a cover stitch. So it is on its way. Um, as I, I know I keep saying that, but it is on its way. Unfortunately, there are only 24 hours in the day. And not all of them I spend working, although it feels like it sometimes. So we are building up to it. We've got a whole load of new things that we're planning. In fact, we have a double pattern launch coming out in July. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. And don't ask me, okay? Don't ask me what it is. I'm not going to tell you. Next get away. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Lock the, lock the key. <laughs> Turn the key. Lock the mouth. Um, more fabrics. That's what we want to talk about, really, isn't it? Now, it's really interesting. Sharon and I were talking about this. And it'll be interesting to I want to ask you the question too, because I tend to do it and I just pull out all of these gorgeous fabrics and think, oh yeah, you could do this and you could do that and you could do this. Sharon was thinking, I've got a pattern and these are the fabrics that will work with it. So which way round do you prefer it? Um, I'm, sorry, I'm kind of thinking to myself, is it easier to show you a pattern and to say, these fabrics will work? And then show you another pattern and say, these fabrics will work. Let me know what you think. Um, because obviously this is more about giving you guys the information that you need rather than just me talking a load of rubbish about fabrics for an hour, although that's probably what it is actually, me talking a load of rubbish. Um, so what are the new patterns called then? Linda! Linda! Come on! My lips are sealed! My lips are sealed. Oh Donna, you've got a cover stitch machine. Oh, fabulous. We will get it out of you, you know. No, you won't Donna, you won't, honestly. I'm going to be really good, I'm going to be really strict this time. But um, we are going to be letting our pattern testers know and we'll be giving them the patterns this week. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Um, anyway, we're going back to fabrics now. Um, and I want the, the fabrics that I'm going to show you are obviously going to be suitable for lots of different dresses. But I think what's quite nice is I'm going to show you... Um, Double gauze. Now we use double gauze for our Angelica. So this is a really beautiful, it's a lovely fabric. It is a really gorgeous fabric. And I love this kind of apricot colour. I think it works really nicely with people who are kind of soft blonde as well as darkest haired people. I think this would look absolutely beautiful. It's such a gorgeous colour. It's more like a soft kind of coral. Um, but it has, now double gauze, we do a, um, uh, a thing in the sewing studio every month called Fabric Focus and one of the fabrics that we have already put information about is double gauze so it gives you a proper explanation of the fabric. We're going to do a different one each month. Last month I didn't really with a single jersey because it was kind of working with the back on the top. Um, next month, July, we'll do some other ones with the new patterns that I'm not going to tell you anything about. Um, but we will have relevant fabrics in there, so you'll have a little bit more information there too. But I think this is gorgeous, and I love it with the lobelia, and I quite like this. I, like, I wasn't really into kind of corals or anything like that, but I'm growing to really like them. And I think these would look beautiful, um, either as an Angelica, which is the one here, or actually we've got Miranda. Now... Miranda comes in two versions, so we've either got, we've got one here which is a slightly kind of more wintry version that has a really lovely pocket detail and three quarter length sleeves, but we also have a more of a summery kind of version. Now this is made up in um, a viscous rail, so we've left off the pockets but we've put inseam ones in instead because you have, we've got to have just a pocket, haven't we? Um, and it just sits so beautifully, but because it's got princess seams, it gives you a much better fit over the bust, um, because it's far easier to do any kind of bust adjustments over with a princess seam. So rather than dealing with darts and FBAs and stuff like that, it's a much nicer one to do. It has got a zip in the back. Oh, there's Charlie just arrived. This side one. I always think it sounds like Knight Rider, <laughs> this car. He's got an electric car, and it sounds like Kit from Knight Rider. He's going to come in and do that thing where he tries to keep creep up the stairs. He's going to try well. and creep up the stairs and it just won't work because we don't have a creep. We have a creepy barn kind of place. Not that it's creepy, but you can't creep. It makes lots of noise. Anyway, Miranda. 
There he is. He's going to come and interrupt us all now. Hello. Oh, you're waving. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this would work beautifully in the labelia, actually. I think that would be gorgeous. Um, and we have got some tutorials on YouTube as well about how to do um, concealed zips, because that's what we've got in wax. But you can't see it, you see it's all concealed, which is rather lovely. So that would work really nicely in a Miranda dress. Well, you're trying to hit it with front feet upstairs now, aren't you? As quiet as I can. And it won't work. I'll try. <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> Oh dear. That is taking two at a time as well. Though. Oh look, that, well, that's actually not too bad. Is it? That's not bad at all. Um, just refresh and see if I can see your comments. There we are. What have we missed? Um, we need to know. Oh, Donna says hi, Charlie. He's just walked up the stairs now. Donna, you've missed him, but never mind. Um, Oh, brilliant. Maria says, oh, you love yours. Learn to go slowly over the seams, though. Yes, actually, yes. On a, I presume we're talking cover stitch machine here. Yeah. Um, this is another double gauze. Now, in fact, I'm going to show you this one and this one. We have got quite a few different colours in double gauze. I'm going to show you some a bit later on as well. Um, and we have embroidered and plain, which is quite nice, actually. So you've got that kind of option as well, which is rather, rather nice. Um, I think as a colour story... They all work really nicely together as well, actually. I do quite like the kind of idea of doing a hodgepodge kind of Angelica, actually. Of having different fabrics on the sleeve, different fabric on the bodice, and have it almost like a patchworky kind of one. I think that would look really pretty, actually. I think someone did that recently, didn't oh, they? Oh, did they? Put it in the uh, oh, so something Friends group. Oh, cool. Oh, I, I'm not having another look, actually, because I think that would look amazing. That would be so cool. Um, there we are, Shorts, Deborah. Mm, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. Um, you can guess all you like, but I'm not saying anything at all. She says. Bailey Yorkshire lad. Hi, Jules. Claire from the Diploma here. Hello. Love, love that mustard uh, double gauze. I know it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's really lovely. Um, now, Claire, is this one of your colours? I can't remember. I think it might be actually from uh, from the other weekend, which would be quite cool. Right, I'm going to move these ones out of the way now because this is a colour story um, and we can make some space. So I'm going to move those up to the back, try and negotiate my way past. Oh, I need to lose weight actually, I can't fit through the gaps in all the fabrics now. Let's pop those over there and we're going to shove these forwards a bit. There we are. So now, again. This is, I love this fabric. This is one of my favourites, I think. Oh, yeah. I could, I could, I could easily wear a dress in all of this, actually. That might be a bit loud for some people, but I actually really love it. I think this is brilliant. Um, what would I do with it, though? That's the question. I think I might, I think I might do an Angelica, actually, and pick out some of the really gorgeous buttons that we've got. I think I might have to do red buttons. On this which I think would be really cool. Um, equally though I think a Kate dress would look amazing in this. Um, so Kate is, now this was a very old, oh, that's not a Cressler jumpsuit, don't look at the label. Um, this was actually one of the, again I think it was an art gallery fabric but it's one of their craft cottons. So Kate dress is really versatile actually, you can make it up in loads of different things. Um, and what we've done is we've made our own binding to go around the neckline and the sleeve and the little pockets as well. So again, that's something that you might want to pick out. You can use a print and then we've used a, a kind of coordinating print to go with it, which is quite cool. But actually, I think a cape dress in, um, in that fabric actually would look lovely too. And I can't remember what it's called and I need to refresh the comments so that... Um, I can see what Sharon's put it up as because I've got to find the label <laughs> now. I'm cheating, aren't I? There we are. Uh, Midnight Meadow Cotton Lawn. That's what it's called. Thank you, Sharon. Come to my rescue. Um, but I think that would be gorgeous, actually. I love this fabric. I would make it up as an Angelica, actually, which is that's the denim version. We've done a chambray version of Angelica, too. 
rather than the, so it does make up quite nicely more of a cottony type fabric rather than the double gauze. But I think this is really nice, I like this. Oops, she says, throw it on the floor. Um, now, slightly different kind of colour story going on. Now, I have shown you this one before, and this is quite a large design as well. It's got sailboats on it, but look at the colours in that. Isn't that fantastic? Now, I think this would look amazing as a, where's it gone? Here we go. In a Hippolyta. Now, this is what my Hippolyta's, and I love it. This is in Coleman Bouquet. This fabric is Coleman Bouquet. But this, I think, would look stunning in that. I think it would just be gorgeous. I really do it. Um, and I can't remember what it's called either. So, plain sailing. Plain sailing. Oh my God, Olivia's beat me again. That's outrageous behaviour. Let's have a quick look. I should pop the link up there. Oh, what's the, oh, Linda says, what's the sleeveless dress at the other end of the rack, please? <gasps> Linda, we'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Actually, we could probably get there now because I think, although this is Hippolyta, actually this, what do you call it? Plain sailing. Plain sailing, thank you. Yes, Amy's called it sailboats, but it is kind of sailboats, isn't it really? Plain sailing. Actually, that would look beautiful in Ursula. So this is our Ursula pinafore dress. Well, it is a sundress because you could wear it on its own. It looks great, made up in a needle cord or a denim, with a long sleeve t-shirt underneath it in the winter, but actually you can wear it on its own in a beautiful, this is um, uh, a cotton chambray, a shot cotton chambray, so it means it's kind of woven with two colours, but it has the crossover at the back, so it's not a crossover front one, it's got the crossover at the back, and again it comes with different pocket options, so we've used the inseam pockets here, but it has little tucks instead of darts, which is quite interesting. So um, it gives you a slightly different, slightly softer kind of look over the bust. But actually, that would be so pretty in that dress, wouldn't it? It would be absolutely gorgeous. So there you go, Linda. That's Ursula, which is a lo another lovely one. I love the colours in that, I really do. Um, oh, let's just come quick and refresh. We get all brilliant, she's popped up. Fabulous, that's good. Now, again, I think if you kind of like little sort of ditzy patterns, little ditzy kind of prints, the next ones that I'm going to show you are again really pretty. And again, I think they would work in Angelica, but they'd kind of work with most of our patterns, really. So, I think they would be brilliant for um, Miranda, which I've just shown you, and um, oops, and I think it would be really nice for Ursula and definitely Angelica. So these ones, now I'm going to do all three at once actually because I think they are rather lovely. We have the three different colours. They are petals on royal blue, petals on red and petals on navy. Um, and I think they're beautiful. They are a viscose rail, but it's a really gorgeous quality actually. It's really nice and light and soft, but it's not going to be a complete nightmare to sew. Um, it just has, and it has that, look at that lovely, see that wobble? It's got the wobble, viscose kind of wobble to it, which is really gorgeous. Um, this I can, made up in um, a Miranda, would be really pretty. It would make up beautifully in the Angelica, again because it has that really lovely, soft, kind of drapey kind of quality to it, which is just beautiful. Or I think actually the Ursula, again, would be a really nice, a really nice one for this particular kind of fabric. So we've got navy, we've got the red, and we've got the royal blue. So navy has a tiny little red dot, the red one has a tiny little navy dot, but the royal has a little yellow dot, which is rather nice actually, and it goes beautifully with our chartreuse linen. So if I put those two together, look at that, actually, those are rather nice. That's, that's nice, isn't it? I like that. I really like that. So I think those three are absolutely beautiful. Um, quite nice for something that's soft and drapey, 
but or if you want that kind of soft drapey quality to it which is quite nice there's always like a little bit of a contradiction isn't there you kind of think soft drapey fabrics need to be with kind of big voluminous kinds of dresses but actually they do work really nicely with Miranda which is a bit more fitted and actually has a zip up the back now you could if you didn't want to have the zip up the back, you could put it into the side seam as well, which does make it a little bit easier to kind of get on and off. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of linens now. Now, this is, I think, really beautiful. It's a beautiful linen stripe. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Which I think is lovely. Now, the dress that I would make that up in is the Olivia. which is that one. Now it comes either with the collar or without the collar. And I haven't got one without the collar here actually. I've only got that one, which is again is another, another one with the collar on it. Um, this is gorgeous. It has a yoke at the back with an inverted box pleat. So it gives you that extra kind of fullness going over the hips, which is lovely. And it has, oops, let me just take that off. Put our labels on there telling me what size it is. Um, Actually, let me just check and do that pin. I don't want to show you this one because it hasn't got the label on it. There we go. They're both in linen, different types of linen though. And it has a big knife pleat at the front that creates the V neckline. You can either have it with the collar or without. But actually, I think this, made up in um, the linen stripe, would just look gorgeous. Because you've got those lovely pleats in it, it kind of works with the stripe and it kind of elongates everything, which is really lovely. Um, I would wear, you could either wear it as a dress on its own, but I think it would look really nice as a kind of a long tunic over a pair of uh, really nice wide white linen trousers. Funnily enough, we've got a pattern for a pair coming out in the book, which is brilliant. Um, I think this is gorgeous and it's so lovely. Um, again, it's I wear linen all year round because it is such an amazing fibre. Um, so you don't have to keep it just for the summer. Um, and I think that works beautifully in those fabrics. Um, oh, love those stripes. Vertical stripes are hard to find. I know, Linda, they are actually. They do tend, a lot of them tend to go across the fabric rather than up and down. Um, Maria, do we have any of the navy coconut buttons back in stock? I'm not sure. If you email us, we'll be able to email you back again and let you know about the navy coconut buttons. So a quick good. question on Instagram. Would the boat's fabric be too stiff for Angelica? No, it would be lovely, actually. It would give you a slightly different... It wouldn't be so kind of drapey, but you'd have that lovely kind of um, crisp. It would hold the gathers quite nicely, actually, so it would work beautifully. It would look, in fact, in an Angelica, it would look amazing. Um, so if you do, do go ahead, remember to tag us so that we can see the photos of you wearing it, because I think that would look stunning. Cool. Um, I'm going to show you two of our linens now. Now this, I love this. I love this colour. It's my ring colour and it's just glorious. Now if you've seen us at any of the shows and, um, and we are coming back, we are doing the Festival of Quilts in, at the beginning of August. Really undecided, but we thought we'd give it a go and see how it all works. So you may well have seen our lovely cape dress made up in the Chartreuse linen. So, um, which is a little bit eye-catching. We like to have it on the, on, the, on the mannequin at the end of the stand so that you can see us. Um, but I think that looks amazing. It's such a gorgeous colour. It is bright, but actually there are loads of different things that go with it. So you could easily pair it up with other things as well. It goes beautifully with navy. We've got it with grey. Um, it goes wonderfully, actually, with a cerise pink. And that looks amazing and really astonishing. I love that colour combination. Um, it goes beautifully with the teal, with that mallard linen. So there's lots of different things you can put with it. So although it's a bright colour, um, and you don't have to wear it next to your face as well, so you could have a pair of yellow trousers with a really gorgeous teal coloured top or something like that. But as a dress, I think it looks amazing. Um, we've just put a little frill around the bottom of the cape dress. Um, it is a kind of a tunic length, so you can make it a bit longer if you want to. Um, and we have done a blog on how to do the frill as well. It's not difficult, it really isn't. All we did was cut two strips of fabric, the width of the material, so 150 wide, two strips, 10 centimetres deep, 
joined them together in a big circle, quartered them, so the seams, where we joined the two strips together, matched up with the side seams on the dress. There we go, you can see the side seams there. And, the, and then we kind of found the centre, front, centre, back, and just gathered it all together. And we have got some really good tutorials on, in the sewing studio all about gathering as well, which is really cool. So that would help as well. And it's a nice one to do because it's such an easy pattern. In fact, we have got a workshop coming up for this. Um, I think it's full, isn't it, Olivia? I, mean, I think it is now. It is yeah, full, yeah, yeah, but we will be doing more. Yeah. If you're interested in doing a cake workshop with us, let us know and we can let you know some dates. Um, so you can come join us in the studio. It is COVID safe. We've got lots of space. All the doors and windows are open. Everybody wears a mask, which is brilliant. I know Boris has kind of said, did we really think it was going to happen on the 21st of June? I really didn't, actually. Um, but as we are carrying on as much as we possibly can. So come and join us in the studio if you would like to. We've still got space on the Julia workshop. Oh, we have, yeah, the Julia top. If you fancy making one of those... Um, now, it's, strictly speaking, it's a, it's a jersey, but I do make it up in linen, actually, and I love it in linen. It just means that you have a little extra gusset going down the side to increase the width on the forearm, because the um, stretch of your fabric normally caters for that, but if you're not using a stretchy fabric, you want to give yourself a little bit of extra ease through the forearm. But it's really nice. In fact, I quite fancy a red one in my red linen. Now, you might have, if you look on the website, if you want to have a look at the um, Amelia dress without the collar, there's a picture of my red one on the website, so you'll be able to see what that kind of looked like. And it's absolutely gorgeous, I love it. In fact, I might even wear it tomorrow. No, I can't wear it tomorrow because we're moving studios. We're having a big shift around tomorrow, and I need to get my work togs on. No, it's at home. Mm. I know, it's no, like, where is it, where is it? No, it's at home, unfortunately. Um, but I love this. In fact, I was wearing my this T-shirt, which is out of the book, and I've made a red one. And it was a really nice one, actually. Um, and it's so easy to do. It really is. It isn't necessarily a shape that suits everybody. Um, if you're a little bit pear-shaped, it might not work. But actually, what you could do is just kind of, rather than making it straight, just make it a little bit trapeze shape, which is quite nice, which is quite cool. Um, let me just refresh this to make sure that I'm not missing any comments. Um, there we are. Oh, Jane. Hi, Jane. Just spent a fortune at the garden centre. <laughs> now for coffee and fabric drooling. I don't blame you at all. Ah, brilliant. Um, Sharon's popped up the link to the coconut buttons, which is fab. Thank you. Morning, Luanne. I'm waving back. How are you? Um, Oh, Linda, see the stripes as baggy trousers. Actually, Porsche trousers in these would look fantastic. They really would. Or we have a new pattern in the book that's coming out for some really amazing wide palazzo pants. <laughs> Lily's just doing a little dance behind the curtain there. Um, and I think they would look fantastic, actually. I'm going to pop that there and move this one. Now, actually, I put this... With another, this is another one that I quite like actually, and I could quite see myself in a Hippolyta or an Angelica, and it's called Florentini. Isn't that lovely? And it kind of goes, you see what I mean by the yellow kind of goes with things. I know they're bright, so it might not necessarily be everybody's cup of tea, but actually, I think they are stunning together. I really do. This is a cotton lawn, um, but it's actually a really nice quality, it's not so fine. That you can't do anything with it and this would make up beautifully in um, a cape dress it would make up for the Angelica you could do it for um, Miranda would be quite nice as well um, and definitely in Amelia although I kind of think Amelia tends to work better with fabrics that aren't quite as busy because you've got that beautiful pleat in the front and the back something plainer kind of shows it off a little bit but do you know what they, it, it, depending on the fabric you use, it can look a knockout in print, it really can. So I love that, I'm going to pop that down there. I'm going to move my chartreuse out of the way. Let's pop that over there, so it's not going to collapse on anything, she says. That's alright. Um, right, let's move these forwards a bit, so we've got a few more to show you. Um, 
Now this is lovely. This is called Mopsy Spearmint. I remember this one because my daughter made a dress for herself in this last year. I love it. It's really cute. It's got little tiny white bunnies on it, which is very sweet. Again, it's a viscose rayon. Um, and it is a gorgeous quality. It's quite a light fabric. Um, so I would recommend using a sharper, thinner needle. So maybe a, a 70 needle on this would be great. But I love the fact that it's got these little tiny pink and navy bunnies in there, which I think would be brilliant. Again, this would work for um, Angelica. It would work for Kate. It would work for Ursula. Um, it would work for Miranda. I think that would look lovely. I really do. It's a gorgeous fabric. It's so pretty. Right. I've got a selection here. Um, but don't worry, Donna. The roll looks very thin. Don't worry. We have more. It's okay. There's no excuse. Right. I'm going to show you a couple more now. Let's just keep refreshing so I'm not missing anything. Oh, Luan, you've got three hours to yourself. Oh, what are you going to make? What are you going to make? Show us a picture when you're done. That'd be cool. Um, so this is, I'm going to show you the first of our embroidered double gauzes. I love this. Now it's, it's a soft green. It's almost like a kind of an ocean foaming, ocean foam kind of green. It's beautiful. It's really lovely. So again, this would make up in lots of different patterns. Um, make up an Amelia, uh, Angelica, Ursula, Kate, um, Miranda would look rather nice in this. The only one I probably wouldn't do with the embroidered um, fabric is Helena because of the pin tucks. Um, but Helena would make up beautifully in the red uh, linen most definitely, or the yellow actually, shot um, But again, this is really soft. We've got it in uh, the soft green. And again, we have got lots of colours. I haven't put them all out today. Um, and we've got it in the steel blue, which is really nice too. Oh, this is Air Force blue, this one. Steel blue is the other one. Um, I think both of those colours, they're lovely. They have that kind of chalky sort of undertone to them, which is absolutely beautiful. I really like those. And again, they would work with loads of our patterns. Um, tops as well as dresses, which would work really nicely too. Um, I'm going to pop that those to the back and show you a couple of the other prints that we've got. So let's move one of these back here as we've got a bit more space now. This is lovely. This is called confetti and I'm sure you can imagine why. But I think that's quite cool. If you're not really into the whole floral thing, then um, I think this kind of geometric stuff works really nicely as well. And I could just imagine this in um, an a uh, little bit, where's she gone? There we are. Depolita, actually. I think that would look rather nice. So, again, lots of different colours in there that you can pull out. I quite like wearing a Hippolyta with just a pair of leggings underneath, actually. It's just that really kind of comfy, loose, relaxed sort of shape. So, you could pick out all kinds of different colours here, or just go with a plain navy pair if you wanted to, which I think would be rather nice. This is a cotton lawn again. But they call it a Marley cotton lawn. So it just has a little tiny bit of a sheen to it, which is rather nice. Um, so that's a really cool one. Um, I also like this one. Now, I know the name of this one as well. This is Marlene. <laughs> but you have to say it. It's a bit like Bianca. You have to say Bianca, don't you? Ricky and Bianca. Um, Marlene. And I'll get this is lovely, actually. It's a really pretty one. So two completely different kinds of prints, but both would work equally well with lots of different kinds of dress shapes. Um, so you've got the kind of slightly modern, slightly 80s retro kind of graphic one. And then you've got the slightly softer romantic floral. It looks a bit like kind of, I hate to say grandma's curtains, but do you know what I mean? I love that. I love that whole kind of vintage thing. I think it's brilliant. Um, and I think it's so pretty. And again, you've got lots of different colours in here that you could pick out and play around with, which is really pretty. Again, it's a cotton lawn, and then a Marley cotton lawn. Um, so it does have that lovely, soft, slight sheen to it, but it just feels really gorgeous. Both of them will wash 
brilliantly as well. Um, I wouldn't ever tumble dry anything these days just because of the fibres getting into the water system and stuff. But um, line drying it, they're fine. And especially on a day like this, they'll be drying a couple of hours, which is brilliant. Um, oh, where are we? There we go. Oh, morning, Meg. A bit late to the party. Don't worry, that's okay. Oh, you fancy a quick Julia, but you've lost your paper pattern. Oh, Luanne. I hope you find it in time to get something made. Uh, I'm going to pop those two down here and I'm going to show now these two. Now, I wouldn't normally have put these two together, but they kind of accidentally fell together on the table and they work really nicely. So again, this is just another Marley cotton lawn and it is springtime haze, but it has that lovely kind of gorgeous ochre background with a lovely soft blue. And again, this is one of our embroidered um, double gauzes. And they, they actually really work. I think they work really nicely together, actually. Um, the colours just pick out. Maybe it's because you've got blue and yellow that are kind of complementary ones on the colour colour wheel. I think that's quite nice, actually. I love that. Oh, really, Sharon's popped up all the links, which is great. That's lovely. Again, I think this would work particularly well as a Miranda um, or even a cape dress too. And the double gauzes are just a little bit softer, so they kind of give you that slightly more kind of relaxed sort of feel, a bit more casual, whereas some of the cotton uh, lawn prints are, or could be, oh, well, <sighs> excuse oh, me, I'm very hard not to deafen Olivia there, she's got her friends on. <laughs> That wouldn't go down well. Yeah, some of the um, the printed fabrics could be a little bit, or could be used a bit more formally, so they'd be fine for work or uh, a function or something like that. But I quite like the double gauze because it has that lovely, kind of soft, relaxed feel. Um, another stripe, which I think would work. Now, this actually, I think, would work really nicely with the Helena dress because you've got slightly more evenly spaced stripes. And I will be using this one for one of the new patterns that we have coming out, which I'm not going to tell you anything about because you cannot get anything out of me today. But I love this. It's slightly more, um, more formal, maybe? I don't know. But I quite like this one too, actually. Now, what's it called? Chamfer and the stickers on the back here. Uh, it's called Grey, very interestingly, Grey Variegated Stripe. That's not very creative, but it does what it says on the tin. So it helps us find what it is. Um, again, it's linen cotton mix, actually. So you have the benefits of both, really, which is rather nice. Linda, I really love this. Is it the stripe that you like, Linda, or is it the... Because I'm a bit late to the party with um, all of the comments. Or is it the double gauze that you're liking? I love this. I think this is really nice. I will be using some of this. And actually, it works... Really nice. This is the plain double gauze. I think this is steel. Actually, I think they look quite nice together, don't they? So you could almost have a pair of trousers out of this, even, with maybe an image and top in the double gauze. I think that would work quite nicely as an outfit, too. Um, but we are talking summer dresses today. So, um, now, Sharon has made uh, an Amelia out of a beautiful, dark, Blackberry linen, which is one of our linens. Um, but I think where are they? There we go. they kind of work together really nicely with the uh, is it Midnight Scarlet Meadow? That's it from Scarlet Meadow because you've got both shades of the kind of hazy, uh, what we it? um, Arctic Dusk and Blackberry Cordial. Should, I should remember what they're called, really. Um, and I think they work really nicely together, actually. But I think both of these... Now, we've made up a Helena in the Arctic Dusk. Now, a Helena, I think, is a lovely, smock, loose kind of shape, which is brilliant. But it has all of that lovely pin tucking detail on the neckline. It also has a back yoke, which is gathered. So you've kind of got the best of both worlds there, which is lovely. I quite like the longer sleeve with the button tab 
um, but you have got a short sleeve version as well, which is quite nice. And I think either of those would make up beautifully into a lovely Helen dress. I really like this. It's, she's been around for a while, but it's actually one of my favourites. I think she's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it is a course in the sewing studio because we do an interesting way to uh, sew the back yoke. So if you are getting a little bit stuck or confused, all the videos in the sewing studio will take you through everything step by step so it makes it really clear and easy to understand. So I think linen is the perfect choice for her, like whatever colour and whatever season because I wear this all year round and it's absolutely gorgeous, it really is. I quite fancy a bright red one. Can I get away with another bright red dress? I think I hope, well, I think I could, yes. But I think that would work really nicely. Um, this is a cotton lawn again. And again, it has that lovely kind of softness to it, which is really pretty. Um, and again, I think this would work in lots of our different kind of pattern styles. Um, but I could actually see this as a cape dress, probably with a frill around the bottom, like the, um, the yellow one that we've got here. And I think that would look really nice, actually. I think it's very pretty. Really lovely colours in that. So, let me move those out of the way. Yes, it will. I thought I had visions of it dis disappearing onto the floor then. Well, I'm going to pop that over there as well. Now, this was quite popular last summer and we've been able to get it back in again. Oops, there we are. So, I just want to show you these last ones because they are rather gorgeous. This is... Hands on, there we are. I wanted to call it Helping Hands earlier on, which I was like, no. Olivia, what's it called? Olivia got it right straight away. <laughs> Honestly, it's outrageous. Let me have a quick refresh. There we are. Um, oh, Linda, working on your Scott bloke at the moment, having a eureka moment. Perfect. We can have a chat about that later this afternoon. That is wonderful and brilliant. Sometimes it's a little bit like, well, it's like anything new. So I like them to drive or ride a bike or whatever. All of a sudden you kind of just get it and you have that light bulb moment, which is amazing. So that's really cool. I love this. And again, because it's such an all over brilliant pattern, something like a Hippolyta or an Amelia dress would really show this off actually, because you've got a large area that's kind of uninterrupted with too many seams and stuff. And I think that would work brilliantly. So this is helping hands. No, it's not called helping hands. It's called hands on. That's what it's called. Hands on. Um, and it's another cotton lawn. So it's a brilliant, if you are kind of new to dressmaking or you haven't done any for a while, cotton lawn is actually a really good fabric to work with because it's very sensible and it doesn't do anything silly and slip around anywhere or do anything like that. So it's a really nice one to, to go with. Um, so that's that one. I've got, now this is one of our other embroidered double gauzes. This is navy, and again, I think it's just lovely. Navy is just so classic, isn't it? You can kind of wear it with everything. More or less anybody can get away with wearing navy. It's such a beautiful fabric, and it would work with all kinds of different things, actually. I, I quite fancy, I mean, Amelia, obviously, mm -hmm. we kind of bought the double gauze in because we had the Amelia, uh, not Amelia, Angelica in our minds when we were thinking about it. But again, it would work with loads of different things. And actually, I think a navy Amelia with the pleat at the front would work really nicely with this too. Um, we put that with the double, this is a, um, a viscose crepe, no, viscose rayon, this one. That's the label, she says quickly before Sharon gets it up. It's called tropical print, navy tropical print, again, really original but does what it says on the tin. Um, this is lovely actually and I think this would make up beautifully in um, Miranda, we've got Ursula, the summer dress, um, the little sort of sundress, I think that would be really nice. Um, Angelica, did I say Angelica? Miranda, that would be really lovely too. It's one of those soft drapey kind of viscose fabrics so it's not going to be suitable for everything but I think it would actually Cressida. Cressida is a dress. I haven't got one here, um, but we do the Cressida jumpsuit. We've kind of hacked and made it up as a dress. 
So instead of having the legs on it, you've just got a skirt, which is brilliant, actually. They make it up in exactly the same way as a jumpsuit, effectively, without doing the crotch seam. So it's dead easy, dead easy. Um, and this would just be beautiful, actually, in it. Sharon's really enjoying wearing her crested dresses at the moment because she goes swimming every morning. Um, and it's really easy because apparently you have to rock up pool ready, poolside ready or something. Um, and so she can just unbutton the, the, her crested dress and she's there. Ready to jump in the pool, which I think is fantastic. So I think that's a beautiful fabric. Would, again, would work with lots of different ones. Um, again, I've got plain linen because you cannot have enough navy blue linen in your life. Trust me on this. It's a fact. Um, and this is a beautiful one. It's not too harsh a navy. It's quite a nice soft one. So again, it's going to go with lots of different skin tones, hair colour, that kind of thing. Um, and I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I plan on doing lots with this this summer. In fact, I would probably wear an entirely navy outfit on umpteen occasions because I think it's just such a gorgeous fabric. This particular linen, our laundered linen, works with almost everything. So unless you're going to use it with a cord well, cordelia doesn't work with anything other than stretch, to be honest, because of the way the pattern is. Um, but I've made, uh, you can make a regan out of it. I've made umpteen Julia's in linen, even though we designed it for a stretch fabric. Um, a simple peas blossom t-shirt. Um, all kinds of different things would work with this. It's just an all-rounder, generally fabulous fabric actually, and I think everybody should have at least one thing in their wardrobe that's nearly linen. Oops, let's put that over there. There we go. Now, pink is a little bit of a, it's, I don't know, it's maybe not that fashionable a colour, I'm not sure. Are you pink people? Do you like wearing pink? Do you find that it has to be the right shade of pink? I think that's one of the key things, isn't it? But this is lovely, actually. It's a slightly chalky baby pink, um, which is rather nice. And again, it's one of our embroidered double gauzes, which is really nice, actually. Let's have a quick refresh, so I don't want to miss anybody. There we are. Oh, Teresa, hello. Uh, oh, you've made the Prezi's dress, and it's lovely. It might be presumptive text getting ahead of you there. Um, I'm not quite sure which dress it is that you are thinking about there. Um, it could be the, I don't know, Prezi's dress. I'm trying to think what Perdita. one that could be. Perdita, could be Perdita, yes. Um, oh, Sue, would it be possible to make the crested dress as a long dress? Absolutely, Sue. You just lengthen it to whatever, however you want it to be, really. That's the beauty of um, making up your own clothes, really, isn't it? Uh, Teresa, how much white linen... To make my gorgeous top, um, I used twice the length that I wanted it to be, and it's at, in the book. So you don't actually have a pattern; you just draft it almost straight onto your fabric, or you can create a pattern if you want to. I tend to do that rather than do it straight onto the fabric. Um, but it's twice the length, so I think I've used about a meter and a half because I wanted it just a little bit longer, and it has a curved hem. So just where you want it to sit from your kind of neck point down to where you want it to be. Double that and that should give you the quantity that you need. Um, you should be able to get the, the bias cut strips for the neckband and the cuffs um, out of all the scraps. So there we go, about a metre and a half should do you. Um, there we are. Actually that goes quite nicely with that. It just picks out that little that kind of slightly peachy but not quite actually, which is quite nice. That's good. Um, white linen. Again, exactly the same as navy. You can't have enough white linen. Everybody needs a white linen shirt in the summer. I don't know, so I think it's obligatory. Um, and again, it's a beautiful quality. This will make up quite nicely in trousers, as long as they're not too fitted. Um, you don't want to put too much kind of stress on um, a linen. The Porsche trousers and the new Palazzo pants that we've got in the book are ideal for this kind of thing. And again, I think they're kind of like a summer staple, aren't they? You can put them with anything. A pair of nice wide leg trousers with a t-shirt or a tunic or um, you know a sheared summer top or something like that would look amazing. So that's another one to add to your stash, I think. Lots of white linen. Let's pop that over there. There we are. 
Now, I love this. This is one of this always makes me think of the kinds of summer dresses that my mum used to make my sister and I in the 1970s. Um, it's called Summer Splendour and it's a cotton lawn, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. I love it, really do. I just think this in a cape dress would be perfect. Just with a little pair of sea salt sandals and a bright colour and I think it would look amazing. Now you can do the cape dress without sleeves. There is a blog that shows you, uh, that talks you through the pattern alterations that you need to do. Because you just need to kind of narrow the shoulder very slightly um, to cope with the fact. Otherwise it just doesn't, doesn't sit quite right on the shoulder if you just take the sleeves out and leave it. Um, but we'll talk you through that and it's a really easy pattern alteration to do. So again, it's another way that you can utilise the patterns that you've got already. Which is brilliant. So that's Summer Splendour and it is a cotton lawn. Again, so it's nice and easy to work with. That over there. Um, now I'm just going to bring these or swap these over just for the last few. Now this is an embroidered cotton, so it's not an it's not embroidery. Hasn't got any holes in it, but it is just an embroidered cotton. And again, I think if you can get away with a white dress for summer, this is the fabric to choose. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, let's do a quick refresh. There we are. Oh, Pam says, sorry, can't join you too much today. Sunning myself on sunny Dartmoor, just watching as I have a coffee. Do you know what, Pam? I don't blame you. I'd much rather be outside right now, to be honest. Um, so I don't blame you at all. Oh, Cressida, Teresa said. Cressida, not Prezies. <laughs> That's funny, I like that. Good old presumptive text, eh? Um, again, I think this would look amazing in a cape dress, actually. Or even a, um, an angelica, but a kind of a knee-length angelica. So if you kind of missed off the bottom tier, I think this would look really cool, actually. In fact, we've got an embroidered... Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kidding. We just turn it off. Sorry. There we go. That's awful, isn't it? My phone going off in the middle of a live. Um, good job it was mine and nobody else's one. Because um, I can't really, <laughs> I can only tell myself off then. Um, actually, I think the two together, we've got the white kind of embroidery or embroidered fabric. This is a embroidery ombre because it has the holes in it. But again, it's, and it's a little bit more of a classic one, but I think this is beautiful. It's such a lovely fabric. And again, I think of Angelica in this would look fabulous with a slightly kind of puffed sleeves. Um, I quite fancy making one of these. And the holes aren't horrendous. So if I hold it up, you know, it's not horrendously gappy actually. So you, I don't think you'd need to line it really. You'd obviously, you probably wouldn't want to wear bright red or white underwear underneath it, but I think this would be lovely. In fact, I quite fancy an Angelica in this. It's only 114 wide, so it's narrower than all of the other fabrics that I've been talking about today. So you will need a bit more. So it depends on the size that you're making. Um, but I would always double check your pattern layout first. I think Angelica needs about three-ish, three, three and a half metres. So you may find that you want to cut on at least another metre because you won't quite get the full width of the gather across the width of the fabric, if that makes sense. But have a look at the pattern layout and you'll be able to work out how much extra you need. But I think that's a really pretty one, actually. I love this. Um, I've seen this made up in a Celia top, too, and it looks really pretty as well, actually. Um, I'm going to show you this one with the pink, actually, because I think the two of these... Now, both of these are linen viscose mixes. So this is a print, and it's called, she says, Meadowland Dark Navy. Now, it is a very dark navy. When you put it next to black, it looks navy, but when you kind of see it on its own, it can look black. But I think that with the with the pink, I think is really pretty. So you could, I mean, going back to um, the cake sample that we've got there from earlier, the um, where we've used a kind of a complementary colour for the binding. This could look really pretty, actually. If you did a cake dress in the print and then just picked out and had um, half a metre, say, just to cut the binding strips, I think that would be absolutely lovely. Or you could have a, 
pair, a nice tunic top with um, a pair of white trousers. Well, actually, this would make up quite nicely into hero trousers as well, which are like the little kind of ankle grazers that we've got. So both of those would work really nicely as well. I think a, um, a Helena in this would be lovely as well. Just a plain fabric to showcase the little pin tuck detail and the neckband, I think, would be brilliant. Um, the last two I want to show you. Um, oh, we've been, oh, we've been more than an hour today. Um, I want to show you these two. Now, this is black, plain black, double gauze. I, in my head, I always, I think black is kind of like a dark kind of fabric, but I always think of black as being more of a high summer kind of colour rather than a winter colour for some reason. I don't know. Because black looks amazing when you've got a suntan. I don't really go brown. I go kind of like, well, actually, I have caught the sun this weekend. Um, but I think black looks amazing in the tan in the summer. And I know that Annette's got a couple of gorgeous, longer dresses that she's been wearing into the studio because they're nice and cool, don't they? And I quite fancy a black Angelica myself, actually. Just, um, and I think that would work perfectly with um, bright coloured sandals or I've got a pair of silver Berkies. Actually, it would be really nice with this. And you can kind of like waft around because it gets a bit warm upstairs. Um, but wafting around in a nice um, Angelica, I think would be perfect. Um, and again, we've got the stripe. Oh, it's really flashing. All like my screen is frozen on a close-up of the white fabric that I've just shown you. So I'm kind of thinking, oh no, what am I missing? Uh, all brilliant. Sharon's putting up loads of links there. That's fab. And the last one I've got is another linen and cotton mix. Now this one, it's just called grey stripe because that's what it is. But again, I think that's beautiful and something simple like a Helena or a, an Amelia dress would look amazing in this. Um, although having said that, I quite like the idea of um, an Ursula just in that, I think would be lovely. And again, with a pair of bright colored sandals or something like that, I think that's it, that's your summer dress for the summer, isn't it? Um, perfect for um, skipping about the beach in Cornwall. So there we go, that's a few fabrics to go with some of our summer dress patterns. Um, is there anything else I need to remind people of? I can't remember now, I don't think so. No, no, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, so lots of fabrics, lots of ideas for summer dresses. Don't forget we're open on Thursdays. You can make an appointment to come to the store if you want to, to the studio, um, if you want to come and have an, a feel and a stroke of the fabrics, which I don't blame you. Um, we have got some workshops still available if you want to have a look at those and uh, don't forget to sign up for the sewing studio because there's so much information in there um, and all of the courses will take you through everything step by step. We've got the exclusive patterns that are only available to members in there as well um, and we've got the two new patterns that are being launched next month which I'm not going to tell you about. Don't ask me anything about them. I'm just going to let you know that they are going to be there. Um, so do go and enjoy, oh my gosh, I've been rambling today for ages. Um, have a fabulous rest of the week and enjoy the sunshine while it lasts. And, uh, and we'll see you here next week. Take care. Bye-bye.